And now the feature film for this evening on BBC One. Peter Ustinov heads a star-studded cast in the classic Agatha Christie murder mystery, Death on the Nile. <laughs> Danger and Suspense for Christmas on BBC One. In Airport 77, a luxury plane is hijacked, but the troubles are only starting. Anything solid behind your back! Oh, my God. Suspense Beneath the Sea in Airport 77, tomorrow at 8 o'clock on BBC One. And there's a feature film on BBC Two in 15 minutes. Billy Wilder's witty and complex mystery, Fedora, starring Marta Keller. Here on One in 10 Minutes, Christmas in Paris with Perry Como. Now at 10.30, the news with Jan Leeming. In her Christmas message from Windsor Castle, the Queen has paid tribute to the men who retook the Falklands. The Queen spoke of the skill and courage of the armed forces who travelled 8,000 miles to the South Atlantic in the defence of basic freedoms. The Falklands conflict, she said, had demonstrated the unity of the Commonwealth and the historical importance of British sea power. While in Britain, we owe our independence to the seamen who fought the Armada nearly 400 years ago and to Nelson and his band of brothers who destroyed Napoleon's dreams of invasion. Nor could the great battles for peace and freedom in the first half of the 20th century have been won without control of the seas. Earlier this year in the South Atlantic, the Royal Navy and the Merchant Navy enabled our sailors, soldiers and airmen to go to the rescue of the Falkland Islanders, 8,000 miles across the ocean and to reveal the professional skills and courage that could be called on in defence of basic freedoms. The Commonwealth, she added, had evolved from Britain's seafaring history and inherited a common sense of individual freedom, democratic government and rule of law. This, she said, bound the countries together, especially in times of crisis. Nothing could have demonstrated this unity more vividly than the immensely reassuring support given to Britain by the Commonwealth during the Falkland Islands crisis. The reference to the Falklands in the Queen's speech is still angering one Labour MP, Mr Tam D.L. He said today that the Queen appeared to be endorsing what many people saw as Mrs Thatcher's war. To do so before the Franks' report on the handling of the crisis was unwise, he added. In the Falklands, it's been a peaceful Christmas after a year which brought over two months of invasion and warfare. The civil commissioner, Sir Rex Hunt, says the islanders' mood at Christmas combines thankfulness for the past and hope for the future. From Port Stanley, Nicholas Witchell. As it is everywhere, Christmas here has been a time for reflection on a year soon to slip away. On 73 days in their winter, 73 days in Britain's spring and early summer, which neither can forget. It is mawkish to keep looking back, and yet here in Stanley and around these islands, Christmas has been celebrated in a style and in circumstances which the islanders would have chosen. Their Christmas carol service in Stanley Cathedral, one line in the lesson read by Sir Rex Hunt had a particular meaning. The light shone on in the darkness, he said. The light shines on in the dark, and the darkness has never mastered it. There appeared a man named John. Here in the Falklands, there is much less sentiment about the events of this year than there is in Britain. Here, there is no romance, just reality. And yet, over these Christmas days, the events of the year have been remembered and thanks have been given. Thirty-three members of the royal family were at Windsor Castle this morning for the traditional service at St George's Chapel. 
The Queen, wearing pink, left the service accompanied by the Duke of Edinburgh. Unlike previous years, the Queen Mother was not present. She has a slight cold. But together with the Princess of Wales and Prince Charles, she is expected to travel to Sandringham for the new year. <laughs> Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips were with their family, though it seems young Prince William will have to wait another year. The Archbishop of Canterbury, in his, in his Christmas message, has called for an end to all talk which made nuclear war anything other than madness. Too many of the world's minds and resources, he said, were concentrated on the lunatic unthinkable. They would be better spent on improving international links. The Pope's message contained particular wishes for his fellow Pope, but no communist country transmitted it. He reminded Catholics to approach next year a special holy year with faith, hope and love. He greeted the crowds in St. Peter's Square in more than 40 languages, including English. The expression inglese, a blessed Christmas in the peace of Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of the world. In the Pope's native Poland, 2,000 worshippers crowded Warsaw Cathedral to hear a sermon from the country's primate Archbishop Glemp. As John Cochrane of NBC reports, he used the occasion to comment on the past year of martial law. Today at Christmas Mass, the leader of the Polish Church, Archbishop Glemp, gave thanks for the release of almost all internees, all except seven solidarity leaders charged with serious crimes. The primate told worshippers that he shares the grief of those families still separated from their loved ones. Lechfa Winsa is back with his family this Christmas. For Winsa took his older children and some family friends for an outing on the Baltic coast. The former leader of nine and a half million workers now has plenty of free time. But Winsor hopes to take his family on a vacation to the mountains in a week or two. Like millions of other Poles, Vawinsa went to Christmas Mass. Vawinsa says his faith in the church is as strong as ever, but he wishes that church leaders would insist that the government start negotiating with him. The sit-in at the Keneal Colliery in central Scotland is over. Eleven miners left the pit at lunchtime after five days below ground. They'd been protesting against plans to close Keneal because of geological faults. The Mine Workers' Union called off the sit-in, saying the men had made their point. Union officials will meet tomorrow to discuss the dispute. They may decide to start picketing every mine in Scotland. There was a surprise Christmas dinner today for Sean Carter, who's been camping outside Selfridge's store for the last nine days. He's first in the queue for the end of year sales, and meanwhile he's been helping to raise money for research into leukemia. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. He's had many contributions, but he wasn't expecting his Christmas treat. There you go. You're probably just not laying out. The nearby Selfridges Hotel provided him with a full turkey dinner to eat at his pavement encampment. It made up in part for him missing the day with his wife and three month old son. Sean, who's an ambulance man in Eastbourne, has another four nights outside before the sales start. England go into the fourth test at Melbourne tomorrow without Derek Randall and badly needing a win. So far, they're two down in the series, but today at least it was time to relax at a pre-match fancy dress party. Mike Blakey reports. The parties became as traditional on tour as the Queen's broadcast back home. Every Christmas, wherever they are, the players parade their ideas before their lunch. One local newspaper suggested unkindly that all Derek Randall wanted for Christmas was his two front teeth. <laughs> How's the uh, delivery today? All right, Mike. All right. Really? Yeah, lovely. A lot better, yeah. thanks. I've truly totally been living on soup for the last few days. I have, yeah. <laughs> Get some turkey today. Yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> well, very good. Well, it's supposed to be a belly dancer, but it uh, didn't work out very well. A Stone Age Australian. <laughs> <laughs> the theme is upper crust for me. And he was. Uh, 
Second World War. So we or got first. to get together. Or whatever. You <laughs> meant to mention you What do you think of this, though? It'll have to go. In charge of the team's fitness is Bernard Thomas, the physiotherapist. Today, he looked to be partially in control of the situation. Given the whole continent of Europe as his theme, Bob Willis may have revealed his innermost fears by choosing a man whose career ended in defeat. He lost the war. And Derek Pringle produced the kind of aggression that England supporters want to see out on the field. One theme given was Charles Dickens. It's a pity that no one came as Mr. McCorber. Two down and two to play, everyone's waiting for something to turn up. Well, tomorrow, Trevor Jesty arrives. And that's all from our newsroom on this Christmas Day. Good night. Good evening to you. If nothing else, the weather was at least uh, fairly kind to us this Christmas, of course, in complete contrast to last year. Although, as a matter of fact, it is turning colder now, and that's going to happen as this cold front works its way down from the north. That'll be coming along during the course of tonight and the first part of tomorrow. As a matter of fact, though, it's not going to move very far away, but it will be responsible for keeping the weather rather unsettled, and even on Monday, I think we'll find some further outbreaks of rain. We can see that cold front on the satellite picture. It's that uh, white uh, band of cloud that you see lying not far from Scotland and Northern Ireland, and that'll be pushing southwards during the course of the night. Clearer, showery weather following along behind, although, of course, what the satellite picture doesn't show you is that the weather's a good deal colder as well. So as far as tonight's concerned, well over Scotland and Northern Ireland, you have those outbreaks of rain at the moment, but already the rain's clearing away from northwestern parts and the weather there turning more showery, and as the night goes on, much of Scotland and Northern Ireland will tend to clear up. The cloudy weather with outbreaks of rain working its way down into the more central parts of the country, but the south staying mild and misty with nothing more than just a little drizzle. And then tomorrow, well, Scotland and Northern Ireland, a bright day, but a much colder day with some sunshine and some showers, but I think cold enough for some of those showers to be wintry, at least there on the hills. In the more northern parts, as well as Wales and the central area of England, starting off cloudy, probably, with some outbreaks of rain. But as the day goes on, that'll move away and be eventually replaced by much drier and brighter weather, though the south, on the other hand, staying mild and misty with a little drizzle. Entertainment for Boxing Day evening on BBC One begins with Blankety Blank. This show is completely unrehearsed. <laughs> anyway, I hope that Christmas has brought everything you wished for yourselves and a happy Yule tide to you. And just as you're getting over the indigestion, here we come at another dose of heartburn. And not appearing on Blankety Blank at 5.55, the eighth wonder of the world, King Kong. At five past eight, the funny side of Christmas. A light-hearted view of the festive season from some of your favourite stars. Oh, what fun it is to in one horse to play. At 9.35, Convoy, Mayhem and Madness with the new heroes of the American West, the long-distance truckers. At 11.25, films of the year just wouldn't be complete without E.T. And to round off the day, status quo perform. Entertainment for Boxing Day evening this Christmas on BBC One. On BBC Two shortly, Billy Wilder's witty feature film, Fedora, with an all-star cast headed by Marta Keller as a beautiful, enigmatic movie queen who holds a dark and complex secret. Here on one in 50 minutes, a ghost story for Christmas, The Signalman by Charles Dickens, with Denham Elliott as a railway signalman who's haunted by a hooded figure. Watch, if you dare, at 11.30. Before that, on BBC One, an invitation to spend Christmas in Paris with Perry Como. <laughs>